Hey, what's up, guys? How are y'all? Welcome back to the OS Rick Project, the only podcast that promises to have continues for the next podcast. I know, guys. Look, the other episode, I ran out of time before I could get everything done about the state of play. So this episode is 44. Is I'm recording it like just minutes after 43. Okay, so think of this as part two of the of the what you call it. Even though there might be like a week space, uh, a week gap in, in you know in in time before it gets released. I might even release it earlier. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But anyways, guys, uh, you know, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. if you didn't catch the first episode. Make sure you catch number 43 because it's going to segue right into 44. Okay, guys, and we're talking about the Sony State of Play. Um, I last talked about the, let me see, we were talking about Wayfinder, uh, Capcom, the PSV, PSVR, uh, PlayStation Plus, uh, a few more games I want to talk about, guys, while we're still on the subject of, let me make sure, sure I'm still recording everything, because I have a bad habit of just push, like, forgetting to push buttons, and I gotta work around it, guys, your boy, your, I mean, look, look, your boy Rick, he's a little over clutch, so, okay, I mean, let's, let's be real here, I, I, I've been known to fumble some things here and there, right, that's why I always gotta... Double check and then double check and then triple check and then, you know, contingencies upon contingencies. Anyways, guys, uh, and I talked about Destiny 2. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Destiny 2. That trailer look, I'm not going to lie to you, that trailer look fun. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to play that way. So, and, and I don't, don't have the time to grind. I really don't have the time to grind. Look, the games I do focus on and grind is probably going to be fighting games. Guilty Gear right now is, is it until Street Fighter 6 comes out. But even then, uh, I still plan on sticking on around Guilty Gear. Yeah, I still plan on sticking around Guilty Gear. Right, guys? Right? So look at you like Padme looks at Anakin. Um, let's get back into it, guys, for the state of play. Did you guys see that Goodbye Volcano High? You know, I saw it. And I've said this before, guys, just because, just because, just because a game doesn't interest me, it doesn't mean it should exist, right? I'm not, I don't want to be that egotistical, right? Or be like, man, I don't like this game. Why is it even around? Look, some people like games where you play as a lizard furry, okay? And you're a teenager and, you know, the comics, comic, comics, look. Meteor is coming to destroy y'all. I mean, that's the vibe I'm getting. Like, it feels like one of those nine in the woods kind of narrative driven games where. Uh, what's that one that came out? That one, like, best narrative at, at the at, at Game Awards? It was like all that looks like they colored over, like, live action stills and stuff. I, I mean, look. I'm sure someone's going to play it and have a... Are they? I mean, anyways, Goodbye Volcano High. And I think I remember they first talked about it back when they were having the state of play for the PlayStation 5 release. I think that's how far back this one goes. And honestly, guys, I thought it already came out and it just kind of flew under the radar. But it's kind of like the other game when you play as a... You play as that... That weirdo band, that's LGTPQ plus whatever, AF, it's like, what are you supposed to do? Like, what's the game part? Uh, I'm sure it's great, but not for, but not, not for me. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, what else was on there? Uh, Naruto, the uh, another arena fighter. It feels like there's one every three years. Does anybody play those? I asked in Discord, and I think one of them plays it. Let me double check, guys. Let me see. I think somebody says they play they play it, but okay. So so okay. So a couple of people have played it on my Discord. So there there's a base for that, but maybe because I'm not a Naruto fan, I, they had one for My Hero Academia, and I think they had one for Demon Slayer, and it almost feels like they kind of make these arena style fighters for you know. The, the, some of the the, the the what's hot now anime game uh, anime shows that are out so again it's not for me but somebody probably likes it now if they made a traditional fighting game 
whether just like one on one, like a, like a regular tournament, like a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, you know, one on one, or maybe like you know, throw some three D stuff in there, kind of like Tekken, where you're not flying around everywhere, but it's still you know two characters facing each other, and you can you know you know uh, you know and you're on the X and Y axis. Even though I don't watch Naruto. I would probably play it and give it if it had fun mechanics or they made like a tag game with it, right? Because I think on like one of the the one of the selling points on the game that there's like X amount, like a lots of ninjas to choose from. It's like, well, if you have that many to choose from, like you can make it a tag game, you know, two v two, three v three. I mean, and again, look, I know who Naruto is. Sosuke. I don't know who that one is. I think I asked Mikhail who that was. I think it's like his rival turned friend, turned rival or something like Goku and Vegeta or something like that. I, I could be wrong. Don't hate me, guys. At me. <laughs> I mean, look, if you have that many characters, if you just make it like a tag game, I, I mean, uh, they, Fighters, DBFZ, Dragon Ball Fighters was pretty uh, successful. It's, they've been doing good. I mean, still around. Why can't they do that with Naruto, right? That's another big freaking... IP, right? I, I think it would do great. But yeah, the, the Arena Fighters, it just... I guess maybe if I was more a fan of the anime, I would I would, I would appreciate more. But um, what else we got here, guys? And I think they wrapped it up with... And they had some other games along the way, guys, but I'll need to write down, I'll need to write down take notes, jot down the things that I want to talk about or have, you know, an opinion on. Some of the... I think that... That's neither here nor there. It's done. Don't worry about it. Um, the last one they were talking about. Uh, you guys might have heard this one. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been in the works for a good minute. It's been pushed back at, at least once now, maybe even twice. I'm not too sure. I, I want to say at least once for sure. But Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. So I was looking around and I saw the end of the, you know, the end of the state of play. You know, they focus on on that game. And then looking around on Reddit and on Twitter, and I like to, I like to use those places a lot to get you know stories and uh, to you know look up things and, and and read around and get people's opinions on what they think about it, and then you know get links to the articles. And if they're not behind paywalls, you know I might even read it, or they don't want to if they don't bombard me with cookies and shit. Um, but just looking around, it looks like you're gonna require it's gonna require you to have. An online connection, whether you're doing multiplayer or solo. And I don't understand that logic uh, or that reason. Um, of course, you know, I'm not a game developer. I don't know what the pros and cons. Well, okay, I could, I could think of the cons, you know. I mean, look, as much as I enjoy the Internet, I'm sure you do too. If you're listening to podcasts, you're listening, you know, but, you know, sometimes the internet gets a little spotty sometimes. It really is. Sometimes it gets spotty and, um, you know, there might be some idiot hit a line or cut something or ran into something and the internet's down for a couple of hours. And, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience and it sucks. And, and we're supposed to do, like, not... I mean, you can't play that. Obviously, I mean, you won't be able to play that game. You don't have an online connection. And to me, I just find that like a big, a big negative. As the kids would say, that's a big L. Um, the benefits of always being online, like, I don't know. Is it because you have to be connected to the internet? So, uh, I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't see you, um, why you would have to always need a connection. Uh, and I'm sure I'm blanking. I'm sure there's some some of you are just screaming at at the freaking screaming at me right now, saying it's because of this big idiot. Well, it's probably and I'm missing it. But let me know, guys. If there's something I'm missing for always being connected. I just, I mean, look, I can understand for the multiplayer part of it, the multiplayer aspect, always being connected. You know, you want to play with other people, you have to be connected, right? And look, guys, if you're playing online multiplayer games, it's 2023. Be hardlined, okay? Hardline your stuff, whether you're on console, whether you're on PC, whether you're playing shooters, whether you're playing, especially if you're playing fighting games, just stay connected. Like, hardline it, okay? Don't, this whole, oh, I'm going to be on Wi-Fi and it'll be okay. Like, don't do that, guys. You're just making it a bad experience for everybody else around you. 
be the change you want to see in the world, right? You don't want to see that guy's rubber banding all over the place, man. Come on. That line is from Gandhi, I believe. Really good line. I, I, I like using that one. Um, but yeah, I always having to be connected. I don't understand. I mean, multiplayer, okay, yeah, I get it. But solo, that doesn't make sense. Um, they, sh they had a lot of gameplay for it. And, and my first... And look, guys, this is just my first reaction. I have no experience with the game. I don't. I, I've, I've just looked at it. I but of course, I haven't played it because it's not out yet. I don't have any early access to it. But just watching what they have to offer, you know, at first I was thinking, okay, it's probably, you know, my first initial reaction was, or my concept idea was like, okay, it's going to be similar to the, the Arkham series games where, you know, maybe you'll pick one of these, you know, one of these characters from the Suicide Squad and you'll go do some missions, you know, depending on, you know, um, you know, you have different strengths and weaknesses on, on which member you play as and you go do a mission. And then once the mission is done, you come back, you continue as this character to keep, continue leveling them up or you'll switch characters or whatever. But it feels like it's all going to be just focusing on like a third person shooter. I did see a couple of melee attacks, but sorry, a couple of melee attacks. But for the most part, it, it was a, a very much a third person shooter. And it felt like, you know, Harley Quinn was zip lining from, you know, from, from rooftop to rooftop, you know, a la Spider-Man style and then shooting in the air. So it's like, you're kind of like, airborne and shooting and kind of hovering i know deadshot had like a like a jetpack on his on his back same with uh king shark and i think like captain boomerang was like about zipping around like teleporting around the place especially they must have gave him some special powers or something but it, it just looked for the most part with these four characters and i think they did say they're going to add more characters later on down the road which you know you could pick a lot from the dc rogue uh, rogue gallery um but it just felt like it was very floaty and you're bouncing around and having just, just like, I'm just not a fan of the third person shooting genre. Oh, well, okay. I take that back. I take that back. I take that back. I take that back. I was just, ex I was expecting this game to be more, you know, beat em up style brawler like. You know, like the Arkham series games. You know, you play as Batman, you're in there. You know, of course, some of them will have gadgets. You know, it would make sense for Deadshot to have firearms. Of course, that makes sense, right? You know, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a freaking... Uh, um, he's freaking Deadshot, right? I mean, of course, he's going to have gun. You know, you figure, you know, Captain Boomerang will have, you know, something up... up a, a mix, you know, special boomerangs and melee attacks, King Shark, you figure he'd just be a big old brawler. But it just feels like everybody's just a, sh uh, it's just a shooter and... Um, and that's just kind of turning me off from wanting to play the game. So, uh, you know, just looking real floaty and, and then just being a shooter, like, okay. Um, they said they were going to have cosmetic season pass. And I was like, Whoa. it's just, look, 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 y'all guys No, I am not a fan of season passes micro transactions loot boxes but look 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 out of you know I, I i see season passes almost almost like the lesser of the of, of those evils you know it's like like I, I'd, I'd sooner be okay with a season pass than i would be with loot boxes and micro transactions um and also depends on the developer right how do they handle season passes some you know capcom does it where you know uh, there's gonna have six fighters coming out and you could pick them up all now or at a discounted price or you know piecemeal them whatever you want uh some other games on uh, fortnite where you know you i can't use fortnite example guys i don't play fortnite sorry um but you know uh what did call of duty do i don't play call of duty either what's their battle pass how's that work they um give you objectives or what's the other one ape god damn it guys you see i need to talk to people who play like battle passes but like i need to sit down and talk to them but be objective about it you know like be hardcore honest because look 
I get it. Uh, you, you want you want battle passes, and you want to justify the purchase that you made, and make make you know, oh yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. But if you look at it objectively, like there's much, and I'm not saying they're all the same. It's all gonna vary depending on the developers, right, and what they want you to do. And I'm not, I'm not saying they're all worse. They're not all all completely shit. Some are okay. You know, I have my biases too. I'm a human, right? But. You know, some of them have you like you have to. This is the only game you're gonna be playing, and you're gonna be grinding. And you know, we'll give you some. We're gonna sprinkle some, you know, little charms for your weapon weapons along the way, just to keep you, you know, here in the game. But at the end of the day, us as a developer want you to keep playing our game. And, and you know, you know, when they, people say like, oh, you could just grind it out for for some for 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 you know, a little key, a little charm on your weapon. Yeah, but you have to like be the. That has to be like the only game you play. Like. 24 7 you, you can't play other games you know it just to me that doesn't make sense like time is money like time is valuable you don't get time back you better do something you know you better enjoy it. that's why guys i want to say thank you very much for listening i know your time is very important and thank you very much for listening i love you i really do thank you for your time um but that being said it just i don't know a cosmetic season pass i like man you guys are just really want to like get that freaking money don't you um and also, like, what's the track record of DC games lately? Well, how's it been? Because uh, this mic is freaking filthy. I gotta dust it off. Um, Gotham Knights that that came out when did that come out two three months ago. Where is it? Like, no one's talking about it. I, apparently, that game was just just. <laughs> From what I've seen, it was like look, they they put all these they, they put some of these RPG elements into it where the enemies are leveling up with you, so they become damage sponges. Which, if you think about it, if you think about it, it's like, why is Nightwing having to beat up all these thugs that are, and why are they taking so many hits? Like they're they're just thugs. They should like be going down in one two hits, you know. Here they are freaking becoming damage sponges. Like, okay, dude, why are they scaling with you? Like, I get it. You got to have some enemies that are tough, right? But, like, even the trash scales with you? Like, okay. Look, I'm just going off of what I've seen, okay? I haven't played the games. Maybe that's my issue, guys. I got to play more. I got to play more shitty games, right? Play more. Just just play more shitty games. It's okay. Play stu- you, you, you want games that have, you know, um, indicators and tell you where to go and, 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 and the games that play themselves yeah we got those games you should play those no don't play those games guys those... okay look play what you want but still i'm not gonna play those games i just oh and also also did you guys like see deborah wilson playing amanda waller like she does okay look i respect the hustle right this lady is in everything she's like in every game i think she was like in forsaken she was she's gonna be like in the star wars survivor games she's in this one what else did we see her in, guys? Come on, I know there's a couple more games. But she, this lady is in everything. I'm like, wow. Like, okay. The hustle's real, dude. She's, she's getting in there. So good for her. But, oh, you remember when she made that cringe freaking announcement at the freaking, oh, was it the Summer Game Fest? Or the, one one of those, was Summer Game Fest or, or, or Game Awards of like the last year or something? Like she came out there like, cosplay as amanda waller and like threatened you know like you guys better watch out the suit was it's like bro that was all right man um what else can we talk about guys um i think that was pretty much it for the state of play like again again it was that was okay um it wasn't the worst one i've seen i definitely was not excited for psvr 2 uh, first of all, I think the price is ridiculous, and then second, it's just it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not excited for it. I, I'm sure there's a couple of you out there that that is there anybody out there that, that listen and and that are, li- that are listening and actually play VR games. If I do, let me know. What what, what do you what do you play and how often? You know, because I've always seen you know it's the the VR experience or the VR something X effect, but it, I like I haven't seen any fully fleshed out games. Okay, maybe the exception of like Alex Half Life Alex. That's the only one I've heard that's like an actual like game game. Everything else was you know you know like a. Like, you just experience, you're like, oh, you're there for the ride or something. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, the state of play, overall, okay. I was excited. Like, again, I mean, my 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 highs 
for that event was the uh, things from Capcom. Again, guys, but I'm a Capcom. I'm kind of a Capcom fanboy a little bit. I'll admit it. I mean, I don't love all their stuff, but Capcom's one of those companies that, you know, me growing up as a kid, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, 64, and Sony being, you know, you know, those consoles that were early in my childhood, you know, growing up playing those consoles, you know, I was heavily influenced by the Japanese developers. So, you know, Konami, Capcom, Squaresoft, um, some of Sony Interactive, you know, those those really shaped uh, how I play these games. Now, it wasn't until, uh, you know, the 360 where I started getting exposed to some of the Western developers, you know, get to see Bethesda and BioWare, um, uh I, I want to say Bungie, but I never played Halo all that much. But you know that you know that one's um, maybe make a case for now. Rare was belong belonged to Nintendo at that time, so they were you know under the Japanese. But um, yeah, so like I said, I'm I'm a big fan of 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 the Japanese developers because they you know they shaped you know my my, my the gaming taste that I have now. Um, but yeah, overall, I feel like the state of play was okay. The the the, the Capcom stuff was the, the the good stuff for me. The Capcom news was the good stuff for me. Sorry, guys, got a good drink of water. Been running my mouth. I'm really good at that. I just start ranting and raving. Uh, we'll we'll go back to the Elden Ring stuff later. Uh, fighting game news. They said Mortal Kombat 12 was rumored for s some reason. I think they were having like a shareholders meeting or something and they said Mortal Kombat 12 was coming out which it was weird because I don't have any hard proof or anything but it was kind of rumored that Ed Boon and his team were were not going to do a fighting game they were going to wor work on something like a non-fighting game so you know people were thinking maybe like Shaolin Monks uh, I think it's like a little side scroller you know uh, what is Shaolin Monks or was it called like Sub Zero Anthology or something? It was like a little side scrolling. You played as Sub Zero, and it was like a, it was a side scrolling platformer game. You know, you play. Which look, they've put a lot of backstory in the characters for Mortal Kombat. I don't know why they don't kind of branch out and do something like that. And look, I'm not saying it has to be. You know, you make a franchise out of every freaking character, but. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could do some other things besides fighting games with some characters. I'm sure you could do, like, platforming games or, or I, I don't know. I mean, they, I'm sure they got creative. But, yeah, I, I think I remember hearing something about they want to do something else besides, a f or they were working on something besides a fighting game. But apparently Mortal Kombat 12 is coming out. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11? When did MK11 come out, guys? That one was the, I remember hearing a lot of things about it. Let me Google it real quick. I'm sorry, guys. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11. I mean, that game came out. Was oh, come on, bro. Mortal Kombat 11. I'm sorry, guys. Release date. So that came out in April, in April of 2019. Um, and usually the life cycle for NRS games and NetherRealm Studios games, the usual life cycle is two years. And, and they've been kind of having this pattern of going from like Mortal Kombat and Justice, Mortal Kombat and Justice, Mortal Kombat. And then it looks like they're going to Mortal Kombat again. Um, I did play a little bit of Injustice. I, 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 it's just hard for me to get into the NRS aesthetics. I know it shouldn't matter, but it's it just doesn't draw me in. Uh, although I would say I do like the Injustice franchise more than the Mortal Kombat franchise. Well, the the newer Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat franchise. You know, I, I did I did play one, two, and three when I was a kid. Of course, it was a fighting game, so of course I had to play it. But uh, you know. The newer stuff, I, I prefer the uh, Injustice games. Um, so I, I really thought if they were going to make something that was fighting, it would have been Injustice. And I heard for like a while, like people were, you know, were just speculating and spitballing that like they should make, you know, Marvel versus uh, DC fighting game. But it's like, okay, first of all, guys, first of all, do you think, do you think Marvel is going to let you see 
Black Widow get blown to bits by Cabal. You think they're going to have a freaking scorpion spear go in the chest of Thor? You think they're going to have freaking Captain America get frozen and then get uppercutted and shattered? Like, no, I don't think they would do that. Now, mind you, maybe they'll do like the whole kind of like uh, DC versus Mortal Kombat route where like the DC characters couldn't get like half fatalities done on them. I think it was something along those lines. Look, I, I look, look. I just thought it was very far, far, far fetched to you know think that they will have DC versus Marvel. I don't think. I think DC might approach it. Warner Brothers might approach it. I don't think Marvel. I think Marvel and Disney. Okay, I say Disney has too much of a image to upkeep. So I don't think they would do that. Um, yeah. So rumors for more. I was about to go on another tangent about fighting games, but we'll say that for later. Um, yeah, Mortal Kombat ru- rumors, and this is the mind you guys. This is just rumors. Take it with the biggest grain of salt. Right. Speaking of salt, um, another one we should be taking it with. Uh, Konami rumored, and this is according to Gamespot, guys. I just check out their Twitter. You know. I'm not much of a journalist, but when I do, I just copy other people's shit, right? <laughs> hey, but you got to give them credit where you find it, right? Because then it just becomes plagiarism. Don't be a plagiarist, you know? Give credit where credit's due, all right, boys? Um, Konami rumored to bring Castlevania and Metal Gear Solid 3 remake to E3, according to GameSpot. Now, your boy is a little bit of a fan of Metal Gear, I see up here. You see, you see, you see, old, old snake here hanging out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Metal Gear, dude. I love it. Now, I think I might have mentioned this earlier, guys. I'm going on another rant, uh, rant tangent. You know, I don't want to see. I don't like seeing politics in video games. I hate it. Right? I'm here to play video games and escape, not be beat over the head about what culture war is going on or what gender you are or what do you identify or what your pronouns are. I don't care. I don't want to play that, okay? I just want to play a game, escape, and have a good time, you know, besides having put up with the whole 9 to 5, right? Now, Metal Gear, Kojima, yeah, he does have some political, you know, some political inklings, you know, stories, but it's not like they're beating you over the head and telling you what this is. What this is like, they're just telling you like, "Hey, look, war's bad. Nuclear weapons are bad." Now here's a story about someone trying to stop a shadowy organization that's you know in conspir- that's wrapped up in conspiracies and 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 black sites and black ops, and just you know makes a really good game out of it. And that I enjoy. I have no problems with it. But when they start beating you over the head with it, like, done. That way, if that being said. Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake comes out. Metal Gear Solid 3 is one, it's what it's up there. It's one of my favorite games. It's it's really good. I enjoyed it. I have a freaking copy of it somewhere in my, my freaking storage collection, all right? I have the OG PlayStation 2 version. I think it came back also with like the HD collection. Now, if Konami gets this crazy idea of making like the HD collection and putting it out again, I would be down because you know which one was a really good Metal Gear Solid game, which surprised me. I'm sure I brought this up already before, guys, but Peace Walker. Peace Walker was really good. A lot of stuff from that game, they uh, Kojima and his team uh, used and influenced to... Uh, a lot of the mechanics, I should say, uh, were brought into freaking Metal Gear's uh, Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pains. The whole, you know, recruiting uh, other soldiers and building Mother Base... Uh, that came from Peace Walker. That being aside, if Konami can somehow get their head out their ass, and that's where their head has been, because I don't think they've done anything with freaking Castle. They haven't done anything with Castlevania or Metal Gear. I think they made like Pinchico games. Uh, why? Uh, I would just like to see the freaking uh, remake. I think that'd be great. It'll be awesome. Um, should they change the story? At this point, can you change the story? Can you do that without Kojima? I don't know. The story's already like, look. I think Kojima is a 
bizarre, yet wonderful storyteller. It, some of his stuff is off the wall, okay? I'll give it that. It is, okay? But it makes for some good stories, okay? Some good plots, especially in the whole tactical espionage, you know, feints, a punch of feints within feints within, you know, cover ups and everything. In Metal Gear, he did great. We'll talk about free. Death Stranding's for another time. We'll say that later, okay? Um, yeah, like if they make the remake, do they change anything to the story? I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't think you can, can you? Everything seems to be sealed and perfectly, you know, set already. You know, the way Kojima originally told that story. So, I mean, maybe they could add some couple of cutscenes, maybe stuff that was cut out from, you know, original stuff. If they decide to add it, but at the end of the day, if we could just see Snake, the pain, the fury. Ah, Jesus Christ, Sokolov, Bolgin. Uh, is it Eva? Yeah, Eva. We could see them all, like in you know, in modern monitors, modern you know resolutions. Why not? I think it'd be great. I would. I would. As a fan, I would really get into it. And look, I, in my honest opinion, in my hands down honest opinion, it's been such a long time since the release of Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater that. Bringing it out now, you will have a totally new generation of people to enjoy this game and see what the story is about and, and see why this is one of the best of that of that series, in my opinion. You know, some people say, you know, it should be Metal Gear Solid 4 because it's still locked uh, behind the PS3. Now, that is a valid point. That is very much a valid point. But I don't, in my opinion... I don't think Metal Gear Solid 4 is as... I don't think it stands shoulder to shoulder with 3 and 1, in my opinion. You know, it's going to be subjective. People are going to have different uh, 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 arguments for it. And I am willing to hear you out if you have a discussion, or want to have a discussion about it, or have some, some different points that maybe I missed. But as a fan, uh, I believe 1 and 3 are... Up there, guys. They were wonderful and the best, well, some of the best in the series, right? Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, and as for the Castlevania, mm, you know, I know we're kind of flooded with the genre of this whole, you know, um, uh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna say the term, okay? You know, we you have a lot of Castlevania esque games. Um, that genre has been kind of saturated a little bit. There's lots of genres that fit that role, but if we could see another Symphony of the Night again, it doesn't have to be a brand new endeavor, a, a sequel or something. But like, look, can we just see Symphony of the Night come back again? You know, for you know, modern screens like a, you know, that's always gonna be my argument, right? To see something come back. For, you know, modern monitors or modern resolutions, higher refresh rates, I don't know. Maybe you add some artwork, some director, com not director commentary, but, you know, maybe some, some notes for, on, on the developers, what they did. Um, I wanted to see Symphony of the Night. I really do feel like that is... That is a really fun game, guys. And if you're a fan of FromSoft games, like, you know, like FromSoft, like, okay... Not talking about Armored Core, but like, you know, the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring. Like, if you're a fan of that, if you have not tried Symphony of the Night, I think you would like Symphony of the Night because it's one of those old... It's, okay, it came out back in like in 1997 for the PS1. So it's one of those older games where if you die, man, you better hope. You better hope you saved you better hope you saved. Are you running low on resources? Like, do you better find a save point soon? Because if you don't, you're going all the way back. And that one, you feel, and those are the ones, those are the kind of games where you feel it when you lose. Like, I want to go all the way back and I made all this progress. I cleared out this whole area and I missed a freaking save point. Like, oh no. Sophia and I, guys, that one's a good one. That one's a good one. It's 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 uh, it's up there, man. If you 
I'm not saying you have to play it, but man, that's one everyone, anyone who loves video games needs to experience it at least once just to f know of what games came from. Like this is what this is what the normal was back in the day. This is what would happen. These are the consequences you would get if you don't play right. That being said, I would like to see Symphony of Night come back and Metal Gear Solid 3. So, again, these are just rumors. But if they announce it, yo, I'm in. I would be 100% in. But they got to do it right, though. They got to do it right. This is the game, you know. Not try to, like, sell you, oh, well, you know, you could pre-order now and get a special MK11 with a built-in suppressor or get this special birthday outfit for Snake or, or get a character season pad. Like, no, 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 don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not about the money. Now, it's, this is not about the money, guys, all right? It's not about the money. I know it's, it's, hard, it's, it's hard for them to think that because they're such a big business. But don't think about your shareholders, right? Think about the people that brought you here, the fans, the people that grew up with these games that love it. I think that's I think a lot of companies forget that, and that, that's what they need to focus. Especially when you have these games like these. These are such these games are held in such high regard. High I never heard, and I haven't met anybody, anyone who plays video games and worth their salt and say that these games were terrible. Maybe it wasn't for them, but I haven't heard anybody say these games suck because they, they don't suck. These are great games. They really are, guys. You should play them. Um, what do you got? Oh. Guys, I'm not sponsored by Steam, but they I do like Steam. I use their stuff a lot. That's like my platform, my launcher of choice. Steam Spring Sale, March 16th through the 23rd. So another uh, in two weeks. So if your backlog wasn't stuffed enough already, or if your wallet and bank account didn't hate you already, here's another reason to add on to it. I'm excited. Because sometimes you find some good gems on there. I think that's about it. As we get closer, guys, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll talk about it more. And see some, uh, see if I find any games that I want, or you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about some games that are that are on my list that are on sale now, and maybe you guys can help me like make a decision whether to get it or not. But yeah, keep your eyes out, peeled for that. Um, also, as on the day that I'm recording this, which is the first of March, this might be a little couple of days after you know when you hear it since it's been recorded, but. New month, new list of games coming out. So, for the month of March 2023, there's a lot of games coming out, guys. But I kind of just wrote down some of the games that have been on my radar, that I've been kind of looking into, something I might be interested in, something that maybe my friends might be interested in, and that I might want to watch play, or maybe I might go on Twitch to go see what other people are playing. But these are some of the games that have been on my radar. And I'm going to just spitball and bounce. Like I said, these aren't all the games, just the ones that I'm paying attention to. Uh, on March 3rd, we have Wolong Fallen Dynasty. I think this is Komi Techno. Komi Techno's version of, like, again, going into that Souls genre, Souls formula. Um, I saw some gameplay. It looked good. It looked cool. I think there's gonna be some layers to it. There's uh oh wait 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 is it the same team who did Nio? Neo. Okay, you guys might say Neo. I always call it Nio. Is it? I think it might be the same team who did Nio. So you guys might have to check it out if you. And I wasn't a big fan of those games, which is weird when it comes to Souls games. It's like I always just like want the real deal, Holyfield. I go to FromSoft right now i have played some other games that were in the same vein the same you know kind of genre-esque of that you know like uh cold symmetry had mortal shells which you know it was it was a blatant freaking souls ripoff but it, I, I mean it in a positive way right i mean uh it was relatively like a short game it was like maybe 20 hours you know so it didn't overstay its welcome it was fun for what it was but like Okay, you played it once. Uh, okay, you enjoyed it. I mean, awesome, nice. Okay, it, you know, isn't as it isn't as you know. There, there's something different. You know, you know, from soft, it just, it just hits different, man. Because not only do you have the gameplay, but you have the atmosphere, the the story, the world building. But it's not like spoon fed to you. You gotta go look for it. You gotta go want it. You know, 
So, I mean, Mortal Shield, like, it kind of had some of that stuff there, but it wasn't enough for me, like, oh, man, this is interesting. Was, no, no. I mean, I, I played the game. I, it was it was a positive experience with it, and then I just never came back. So, um, yeah, Wolong, Fallen Dynasty, it looks like it would be somewhere in that style. It looks pretty. Uh, I would have to... <sighs> Like I'm not, it's not a day one purchase for me, but it's something I will keep my eye on and see, you know, how it gets received and how the people think of it. And then I'll talk to my friends and my peers and, Hey, are you playing this game? Let me know what you think about it. And the same with you guys, if you're listening, let me know what you think about the game. All right. Um, uh, March 6th, we're going to have dead cells, the return to Castlevania. You know, guys, as much as I heard about this, I thought this was out already. I really did think this like mashup was out. Um, I'm not gonna lie, guys. It's been a Dead Cells. I do like the game. I, I had a really good time with it when I played it. It's one of like it's like a gamer's game for real. But I haven't touched it in a while, and I'll have to go back. So um, maybe this is a good reason for me to go back. I mean, I like Castlevania. You're gonna be playing Alucard and I think Simon Belfort, or no, Simon Belmont, Belmont. Um, and it's from uh, damn it, what's the name of the freaking developers? Twin Motions, you know, those guys are always putting out content, updating Dead Cells. You know, if they have any DLC for it, it's 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 reasonably priced, you know, $49.99 for, you know, you know, those guys are doing it good. I love it. They're doing a great job. Support them, guys. Um, March 7th, The Outer Worlds, Spacer's Choice Edition. Now, when I first played this game, I played it on the base PS4, and man, the performance was the main reason why i did not want to play continue playing this game it just felt like i'm playing on the base ps4 maybe you know maybe if i played it on the pro i would have had a better experience with it but on the base ps4 the low times were horrendous especially when you are indecisive as i am where you're like all right let me go with this oh wait 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 wait, hold on let me go talk to this let me go back into the the, the, the back in the town and go talk to this okay never mind wait no no i'm good i'm good let's go Wait, let me go back, like, uh, and then, like, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, all that loading was, like, it took forever. It just wasn't fun anymore. Look, my wife did play it. She enjoyed it. I think she played one of the DLCs, maybe both. I'm not too sure. But she had a great time with it. And it was from, if I recall, Obsidian. And Obsidian are the same guys who did Fallout Las New Vegas? Don't hate me, guys. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But apparently, that's one of like the, the 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 better ones. So, I mean, like I said, I played it for very little. Um, if I were to play it again, it would definitely be on PC, where the load times were way faster. Uh, or I would, you know, maybe I'd just backseat game and what? Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have my wife play. I'll just backseat gamer. You guys could see all my reactions when she dies or something like that. Um, let me see. March 10th, Bleak Faith, Forsaken. Again, guys, this is another one where it's in that whole nebulous genre of souls, souls born, souls s, soul, whatever you want to call it, guys. It seems to be in that vein, that style. Uh, just from looking at the, man, I saw some trailers of it. Uh, looking at some of the artwork, it's gonna be very dark and gritty, that very dark fantasy. Um, I'll give it a shot. I'll look at it. I'm okay. I'll give it a shot which means I will look at it, okay? I will go, you know, see how the people are playing it. And again, what I do, guys, I just go on Twitch and, you know, type in the game that I'm interested in, and I'll just sit down. You know, you know, they got, like, you know, a couple of viewers, you know, you know, we're between, you know, zero to 20-something viewers. You know, I'll pop in, ask some questions about the game and see how I feel about it and, and give it a shot. But um, Bleak Faith, Forsaken, I, and that one's on Steam, guys. Uh, March 24th, Resident Evil 4. That's that's I, th I think that at this point's auto buy. I mean, I'm 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 excited for it, uh, and especially when uh, I think I might have talked about it too, guys, a couple of months ago, where Capcom says they want to focus a lot more on the PC platform, which I'm super hyped for, man. I, I'm I, and honestly, every game developer should have PCs on the mindset of having this ready to go. Don't make, not, not, let's make a port for the PC. No, 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 no. Your game should be ready for the console and the freaking PC when they launch. Like these, this should be going in hand in hand with a, a simultaneous release um, for all the platforms because, you know, 
and, and I've talked about this before on not the last episode, but the previous episode on the PlayStation Master Race, where it feels like a lot of games now is just they're just they're just optimized for they're or they're not optimized. I should rather they're not optimized for the PC, and it just feels weird. And look, I get it, guys. There's just so many variables across the board when it comes to PC. My PC you know, is not the same as my secondary PC, which is probably not the same as your PC, depending on, you know, the GPU, because, you know, there's there's Intel and AMD, you know, the GPU, there's, you know, red, green, blue, you know, the amount of freaking RAM that we have, maybe even the motherboard might come to effect, you know, the type of monitors that we have, whether we're using an HDD, SD, NV, uh, NVMe.2, uh, or, you know, just a regular uh, M.2, uh, or, or a regular SSD. I mean, it's just, there's just so many variables, right? And I'm, no, it has to be a challenge for them to get there, but they have to find some way to not treat PC as, you know, a secondary. I mean, and we've seen it, right? I mean, uh, point in case, um, one of my favorite games, uh, Elden Ring. It, it, it got really, really good positive scores. It probably would have been a perfect score if it wasn't for the performance issues that it had on PC. And even then, it's even now to this day, it still has issues with uh, with PC. And it's frustrating. I played on my PlayStation, and it runs. You know, there's some minimal pop ins in the in, 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 out in the distance, but it's nothing that that you know. There's no stutters in the freaking on on the console version, right? On the PC, yeah, it looks great. You know, but the performance is, is, is kind of lacking sometimes. When you're getting stutters in the middle of a critical fight, like that is just not fun. And again, I know some friends who they say I never had any, any stutter issues on PC. Maybe I'm in the minority. I don't know, but that is something that I just does not make sense for me. And FromSoft has to like take care of that. And that's just not them, right? There's other developers too. I mean, we saw it with was it with Port Key Games, the guys who made uh, developers of uh, of Hogwarts Legacy. I mean, I'm sure the game is in a better spot now. I'm sure they did some updates, but when it first launched, it's like <laughs> if you put everything to to max and 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 you got ray tracing going on and everything, good luck, man. That that's gonna bog you down. You, unless you have the beefiest of beefiest. I mean, uh, I don't know. So I just want to see, uh, you know, companies like Capcom. They're talking about, you know, they want to make. PC, you know, just just as uh, one of their their something to focus on to release their games. I'm excited for it, you know. And I could tell you firsthand, guys, playing Monster Hunter uh, Rise and Resident Evil Two, the, the some of the features they have when it comes to the GPU, they'll tell you how much how much uh, 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 memory you're using on on your on your GPU and what you know options when you take this off, how much more space do you have on there? So that's a good feature, and I hope they continue to do that, especially with Resident Evil Four, because if they're, I mean, it's one of their best games. Um, hopefully, the you know, the the, the, the treat it as such. Um, March twenty eighth, Crime Boss, Rock K City. You know, when I first saw this one. I was like, man, this this looks badass, man. They got all these actors in this game. It's gonna have like a, it looks like it's gonna like a, it's gonna look like a Grand Theft Auto esque, you know, kind of game where you just, you know, just a bunch of craziness going on. But then after I, I sat down with it and saw, and, and you know, like after like it, it got off my radar, I was like, oh yeah, I don't think I care about this game. Like I thought it was kind of cool they had all these actors in there, but then it's like, and and okay, cool. Is this gonna be still a cool game? I mean, it looks like it's gonna be fun. It looks like like just from the cast of characters that they're bringing in: Michael Madison, Vanilla Ice. Um, Ah, oh, Jesus, uh, Danny Trejo. Um, you know, they have uh, they have a whole bunch of people coming in, right? Like, okay, kind of cool. But then I thought about, it, I was like, and eh, I mean, is this still gonna be a good game? Like, I don't know. So it's coming out on the twenty eighth. That one, like I said, I'll look at how it plays. But unless it brings something fun, like I don't know. Uh, and then on March twenty eighth, we're gonna have The Last of Us Part One coming out to PC, which on in all honesty, this is probably the good time to do it with the show coming out being a okay. It it um, it um, it's an it's a successful show, right? I admit it, guys. I stopped watching after like season. I mean, after episode, I got like halfway through episode four. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm 
I'll, I'll take a break. Maybe I'll come back later or something. Um, but yeah, with with the series being strong and being greenlit for a season two, it coming out uh, at the end of this month, I, I think it's good for Sony. I, I think I think it's gonna be a good seller. Now I do remember talking about Returnal came out last month and it wasn't doing so well. Uh, I have no idea why why that is, but I believe with the success of the TV show, uh, The Last of Us Part 1 will probably do well So on PC. Um, I mean, it should run fine, right? It's not like it's a graphically demanding game. I mean, it's a, originally it's a PlayStation... Oh, it's Mona and the Bad Guys. I mean, originally it was a PS3 game, right? I mean, unless they did the remake. Um, I definitely do not buy that remaster. The, 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 the game I played, I think I, I played the PlayStation Plus collection version of the game, so... I was not going to spend 70 bucks just to see Joel's face better. Like, what the fuck? I don't give a shit. Um, so, yeah, for March, those are some of the games that I'm interested in. So, um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, maybe there's some games that I missed that you guys are excited for. Please let me know. Um, they showed off a Tekken 8 Jin gameplay trailer. Guys, I'm high for this one. This one's like fun. I know I say this for about every freaking fighting game. I know, I know, I know. I'm freaking addicted to fighting games. I know. But Tekken, Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, those are some of the those are some of the big fighting game franchises, okay? Mortal Kombat is up there too. That's, that's one of the big ones. You know, these are some of the big the big boys. I guess to a lesser extent, King of Fighters. Right? To a very lesser extent, King of Fighters, right? But you know, those are the big ones. You know, Tekken, Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat. I want I'm just I'm I'm excited to see it. I want. I want to see more. Uh, hopefully, at E3 in August, we'll get more news for it. Uh, I'm doubtful that it'll be coming out anytime this year. If anything, maybe 2024. But even then, if nothing comes out this year, but besides just trailers and news and announcement, I will be fine with it. When it comes to fighting games, you gotta take your time. You have to take your time. Okay. And I think I was reading that uh, Harada, he's going to be working. Uh, uh, um, I think they said they got rid of all the assets from Tekken 7. Everything in Tekken 8 is being built from the ground up using the Unreal Engine 5. And Harada is very hands-on on how to optimize the engine for the gameplay. So I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see more. I'll keep you posted, guys, if I get any more news. But like any fighting games that are being released in this age in this time in this period you gotta have the basic fun uh, functions and necessities to make your game successful in my opinion right you're gonna have the online rollback netcode not, not delay base you gotta have the rollback and it has to be good okay you're gonna have to have cross play you're gonna have to have what else do we need guys mm, i'm sure cross play rollback um Dare we add casual controls, modern controls? Does Tekken need it, guys? Do you think they need it? Because the, they're pretty easy, right? It's left, right, left, right, punch, kick. Maybe. Uh, I know they're adding. I think they're count, they're adding heat, like ex gauges. I think I saw that. I gotta double check. I gotta double check. I think they're eating. They're adding eating, adding ex gauges. So we'll see how that works. But yeah, Tekken 8. They showed a trailer. Check it out, guys. It's not. It's very short, guys. If you love fighting games, you've probably seen it already. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Okay. One last deal before we wrap it up for this episode. It's already kind of going. Like I said, guys, this is supposed to be. This was supposed to be a twenty-minute episode from last week. This was all supposed to be like one. Okay, but I had to break it down. Um, so to wrap up this episode, my hair is all over the place, guys. To wrap up this episode, we're going to talk about on, um, it was on, uh, at the end of, it was what, the 27th? I think it was on Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Monday. They announced the uh, Bandai Namco said, they, they tweeted out that the Shadows of the Earth Tree DLC is currently in development. So we're getting DLC, guys. We're just days after the one year anniversary of the release of Elden Ring. All they showed was a steel shot. It showed the earth tree out in the distance, looking kind of in a bad shape. It looked like it was 
some ash was falling from the, the limbs. It looked like it was pouring out some sort of green fluid. Mind you, this is out in the distance. You saw this blonde figure out on a mount that looks a lot like Torrance. And then you got to see some of these ghostly remains, some outlines of some graveyards all over the field. So could this mean this is taking place years after the shattering or maybe years leading to the shattering? Like maybe even before the crucible, maybe this is when the earth tree is developing or so. I don't know. I mean, when it comes to the freaking storytelling, for Elden Ring, I feel like that meme like with Charlie Day when he's like pointing at the freaking wall and has strings going all over the place. That's how I feel when I try to talk about the Elden Ring lore. So who knows where it's going to take or who's to say it doesn't take place like another dimension or another part of the lands between. But we have been told DLC is coming out. They are working on it. That being said, do I expect this to come out in one, two, three months? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe near the end of summer. Maybe sometime in the fall. Hopefully is when we'll get some more. Uh, maybe a release date for that. Maybe that might give us some little little crumbs of information along the way. But I won't expect the release date until that time. You know, late summer and, and autumn. So what do we want to see in this DLC, guys? Well, hopefully it's nice and beefy. I'm big. Now, do they gotta add a whole new world? No, 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 no. Let's add, let's. Uh, how about let's 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 be a, let's be a little ambitious, but not overly. But don't be don't, but don't be over excessive, right? Um, how about they add a new area? You know, something like the size of you know maybe like uh, the size of Kaled or the size of Lernia Lakes or the size of you know we, you know like one of the regions. Maybe they add us another region the size of that. Maybe have one or two legacy dungeons. Uh, perhaps add another arena feature. Uh, that'll be um, maybe not. Maybe an arena feature that won't be locked in with the DLC, but will be released simultaneous with the release. So that way the PvP community can still have something. Because I know they had Coliseums uh, released maybe two months ago. Um, so I would like to see. A uh, couple of legacy dungeons, one or two legacy dungeons, a, a new area. I'm not saying it has to be huge, but maybe, you know, like a, you know, like a Lingrave size or Kaled size or something like that. Uh, weapons would be nice. Weapon arts. Spells. Uh, what else can we see, guys? What would we like to see? Hmm. Maybe that. I mean, I, I, like, I'm already rattling off a lot of things now. Am I going to see all that stuff? No. Probably not. But uh, those are some of the things I would like to see. And I'm excited for it. And look, this is, gives me another reason to go back to the lands between. Uh, I, and I, I'll admit, guys, I'm still kind of playing the game. Uh, I started another playthrough using the AMD computer. Uh, I'm still testing out another... Uh, and I started another playthrough on the PlayStation because I'm testing out the PlayStation. I'm testing out the uh, you know the capture card. So, you know, I'm... I still, not as much as I used to, but I still play Elden Ring. It's still one of my favorite games. I think it's still a great game. I think that's another one of those games where modern gamers need to play that game. You don't have to stick with it. You don't have to, you don't have to like, you know, go all the way to completion, but you should play that game just to see what the experience of what a front uh, of a FromSoft can bring to the table because it's unique. It's something you don't see every day. It's 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 one of a kind and it's very and it's very rewarding when you get to see some stuff and, and it's just fun to go explore. It's not for everybody, but in my opinion, guys, you should play it. Give it a shot. I mean, it, it's it's, a, it's such a wonderful game. Anyways, guys, uh, I know I went super long today, super extra hard. Uh, we talked about the state of play. Stuff coming out for March. We, t we talked about the rumor mill of possible stuff coming out. Elden Ring DLC. Guys, I want to say thank you very much for hanging out. I appreciate you guys are the best. I couldn't... I mean, I love I love streaming and podcasting, but knowing that you guys are out there listening and watching and, and interacting, I mean, it makes it that much more better. I mean, especially when it comes to streaming, guys. I love playing video games, but when you guys are out there and drop by to hang out, it makes it that much more better. It, re it really does. Uh, you guys, I, I'm humbled that you guys listen, that you guys drop by and visit and and, and just get and, and 
and just talk to me about it or when you come by the discord and stuff like that and yeah guys if you want to drop by drop a line you know i'm almost streaming twitch.tv um forward slash os underscore r one ck uh, my schedule is usually monday through friday or off on wednesdays and you know sometimes on occasion i'll stream on a saturday or sunday but yeah guys drop a line i hang out uh i am reading kaiju number eight guys i uh, borrowed this from my wife's co-worker it's a awesome manga they're going to make an anime out of this later so check it out guys um anything else i think that's it guys i want to say thank you very much for hanging out i love you i appreciate it play some games get some exercise do some fun things spend time with your family with your friends do your hobbies guys i'm rick and remember stay sharp i love you guys bye <laughs>